Connor, it's been a long time since you played in a game. Uh, what are the emotions like going into tonight? And what what kind of the expectations of yourself as you kind of get going here in the start of the year here? Um, yeah, I mean, hockey's one thing, but just like to take a moment to, to recognize what today is in this country. And, um, you know, obviously it's Truth and, and Reconciliation Day. Um, you know, and I think it's a time for, for all of us to reflect and um, uh, remember, you know, our, our, our country's history and, um, you know, continue to, to work on ourselves and, you know, continue to reconcile with the indigenous people, you know, our brothers and sisters in this country and, um, you know, continue to, uh, to make our country um, inclusive. I was going to ask about that. And, you know, unless you're, you're unlike me, I didn't learn a lot about it in school. Did, did you and, and what have you kind of maybe done the last couple of years to, to really learn a lot more about this? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I guess I learned as much as, as they kind of teach through 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 growing up and through school, and um, you know, I think uh, now's a great opportunity to continue to educate yourself on kind of the, the history of the country and and how we came to be and and, and kind of what what has happened and um, um, yeah. I just wonder. Uh, I know team goals matter to you more than anything else, but is this the year fifty goals for you? It would kind of in the, be in the cards or is that kind of a real goal for you this year? <laughs> um, you know what, uh, this team has kind of done the individual awards thing and the stats and all that. So, um, you know, our focus is on, on team only and, and winning games and getting ourselves into, uh, into a good spot to, uh, to continue to, you know, take steps forward. Obviously getting into the playoffs is, is the first step through the year, but, you know, getting off to a good start is super important. So, you know, first preseason game here tonight for a, a large majority of us and um, looking forward to that. Um, yeah, just trying to, to work out the kinks, I guess. You, you haven't played. Uh, we saw you at the game against Winnipeg. Have you had an opportunity? To, are you keeping an eye? I, I realize you guys were skating back at Edmonton during the rookie tournament, but are you excited about, you know, some of the guys that have maybe that are pushing up a, a kid like Dylan Holloway as an example? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I think Dylan's had a great, uh, a great camp, great rookie tournament. Um, he's kind of done everything that's been, been asked of him. And, you know, he's still, you know, a young kid and, and he's had some bad luck with injuries. And so he's kind of just getting his feet wet into, into camp. And um, it's been impressive so far to see what he's done. But, you know, just I think the, the rookies as a whole have looked uh, real good, I think. So it's a good, uh, it's a good sign. Do you sense that there's more competition for positions here and that the organization's deeper and at a better place maybe than in prior years when you were here? Uh, for sure, for sure. I think uh, there was definitely a time, you know, when, when I was kind of young in the league where, you know, we'd be looking to the, the, the first round pick to, to come in and, and uh, you know, play a big role. Um, you know, and this year, obviously, Reed came in and was great, but, you know, no one was expecting him to, to come in and, and make the team. and. Uh, you know, just kind of allowed him to get the experience and, and head back to junior and, and continue to develop. So um, I think it's a good sign for the organization that uh, we're not looking for, for young kids to come in and, and, uh, and uh, you know, I guess move the needle. You know, they can come in and push and push for jobs, and that's great. But, um, you know, they're not, uh, they're not here to, I guess, uh, you know, make the team, I would say. But not to say that they can't, but... <laughs> Um, getting back a little bit to what Daniel brought up about the, the 50 goal thing, I, I just wonder about how much you tailor your game to the people that are playing on your line. So, for example, if you're going to play a bunch with Evander Kane this year, you know you got a pretty good shot on your left side. Do you shape your game to the strengths around you and goal totals and assists will fluctuate somewhat based on that? Um, yeah, it's a good question. It's for sure something that I, that I think about. You know, when I'm on the ice with Leo, I think game maybe a little bit differently when I'm on the ice with other guys uh, I think a, a little bit differently too so I'm um, obviously playing with Evander and, and, and Yamo um, you know two guys that that can score obviously Kaner can can put the puck in from from just about anywhere so trying to get him the puck as much as possible but you know scoring goals is, is the most difficult thing in this league I, I genuinely believe that and you know some guys have an act for it and others uh, have to really work for it and, and, and I would fall into the ladder there so um, you know yeah, just continuing to, uh, to to round out my game is is uh, is the focus. Yeah, along those lines of rounding it out, you you talk sometimes about trying to you know find fresh ways to attack. Maybe you're working on specific things in the off season. How much is a group 
is that part of it, working in new things, maybe figuring out different ways, different looks so that you can't necessarily just be pre-scouted and some fresh stuff. For sure, for sure. I mean, the core here has been been together for a long time and especially our power play. You know, our power play has, uh, has been successful for a long time, but I felt kind of just throughout the year that teams are getting used to the same old look. So continuing to throw new looks, continuing to, to throw little wrinkles in into your game is, is so important. I mean, today's game is so well well coached and it's so uh, you know well pre-scouted that you know you have to to, to make little adjustments here and there um, and keep everyone on their toes. Your thoughts on the uh, preseason schedule? Some, some teams play six, some teams play eight. You guys show up in fabulous shape right from start now as opposed to 20 years ago. There's not a ton of jobs here. You can see for the goals, a couple, not a whole bunch. Uh, is eight games too many? I would tend to think that that eight is too many. I would, uh, you know, but, you know, understanding that uh, it's the preseason and, um, you know, it's a chance for, for lots of different guys to get looks. Um, you know, ultimately, though, as, as guys that are going to be on the opening day rush, you want to be able to get your game up to speed and get our team game up to speed. And you know, I think that's where we're at now um, in camp. And I thought everyone's kind of come in and, and, and done, you know, everything that's been asked of them, but I think it's time for, for us to get our game where it needs to be and, and you know, ready for, for opening night. So, as an individual, I guess I would ask you how many games you feel like you want, and how many games do you think, you know, your power play needs and, and your line needs to be, what does it take for you to be ready for your season? Yeah, it'll probably take three or four for me. Um, you know, I've had, I've had years where you play four or five, I've had years where, you know, you don't get any. Um, you know, it's kind of, you kind of got to be ready no matter what happens. So, um, you know, I feel like uh, my game is in a good place, but, you know, we'll find out tonight pretty quick where it's going to be at. Um, you know, but it's it's just kind of step one, right? So um, definitely looking forward to getting out there and, and playing against some uh, some real competition and, and seeing where I'm at and seeing where our team's at. I think also, you know, kind of what's lost is, is the flow of the game, right? You know, guys, cloud has been playing... 25 minutes it seems like in, in preseason games and you know, those are big minutes and um, you know I'm not sure he's going to play that much in, in, in a game so I'm, you know he needs to feel the rhythm of the game as well so um, with, with everyone in the lineup so there's definitely a team rhythm that, uh, that we need to get into as well. Uh, there's a lot of younger players, and obviously you were in this boat years ago, getting the captaincy at a very young age. Um, Brad Marchand, about a week ago, to paraphrase, said it's almost unfair to, because kids, players don't know much about the league coming in. I'm just wondering what it was like for you to get the, the captaincy at that age and what you, how long it took you to kind of feel comfortable and what you kind of learned in the first couple of years of it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a learning experience, you know, and there's no, uh, there's no really way to, to prepare for that. Um, you know, I certainly... You know, it was, it was a huge honor to, to be named captain and to be named so young. And, um, you know, I feel in a lot of ways I've kind of grown into the role. Um, you know, I may have, maybe wasn't ready at 19, um, you know, but I've had six years of experience being a captain and, and uh, I wouldn't trade that for anything. So um, definitely a lot of learning on the job as you go. And um, you know, I feel uh, very good about being the leader of the team and, and uh, um, you know, wearing that letter and I take it with great pride and, and uh, try to do everything I can possible to help uh, help the team win. Perfect. Thanks, guys.